It's been about a year since Canada said farewell to Dr. Peter Uni, a respected scientist who was thrust into the spotlight during the pandemic. We still haven't tackled the main problem here. We need to address the root causes if we want to get this pandemic under control. As head of the science table advising the Ontario government, he became known as an informed voice of reason who wasn't shy to criticize the government. Everybody needs to help now, including the provincial government. I spoke with him last year as he prepared for a new prestigious position at Oxford. And last week I caught up with him in London. As you'll hear, he says Ontario did much better than the UK during the pandemic. And he says the reason was how groups like the science table dealt with the public. Peter, thank you very much for joining us. Thanks for having me once more. <laughs> the last time we talked, you were in Ontario. Lots of people would have known you. You were on TV, other interviews so often. How does it feel now to be like basically anonymous? Oh, it's wonderful. <laughs> you know, this was one of the big deals for us. Mm -hmm. We were just going everywhere and nobody would recognize me. It was amazing. <laughs> well, enjoy that. Uh, but let me now take you back to the pandemic. I know you've had a chance to look at lots of statistics, lots of numbers. Uh, and, and tell me how the UK compared with Canada during the pandemic. Oh, it's impressive, you know, but uh, not in a positive way. Um, the UK did so much worse than we did in Canada and especially in Ontario. Um, and I find it still mind-blowing actually you know the, the department i'm working in is the department that coordinated the recovery trial that's the trial the trial that uh, recruited more than forty-eight thousand people meanwhile and that gave us nearly all the answers that we needed to treat patients in the hospital worldwide and the same country that managed to pull off this trial nationally completely failed from my perspective regarding covid policies and you think a lot of it has to do with the lack of transparency, the lack of disclosure in Britain as opposed to Canada. Tell me about that. Yeah, this only occurred to me actually much later after I had stepped down as the director of the science table. We had this little byline in our rules and regulations that said that we would report completely transparently to the public what we would report to the government. And the, uh, the science advisory body here in the UK called SAGE didn't have that. What I felt really was that my obligation towards the public was to be completely honest. If I would not do that, I should step down. I can ask you this question now. We're sitting in London. We're a year away from your having worked and lived in Canada. Was there a moment where a cabinet minister or the premier or somebody got you on the phone and said, you know what, Peter? you need to stop talking about whatever, masking, you know, gathering in public places or whatever. Was there ever a moment like that? Um, I mean, there was at least one moment that I remember where Stanley Brown actually had uh, conversations. Also. Who was your boss? Was, That's yeah. my boss, yeah. yeah. This was my boss, was the chair of the science table. Yeah. But the Stanley always held my back. What do you think the result was of that level of openness? If you're not completely honest with your patient, who is, you know, your partner in what you're actually deciding together, you won't have the trust and then it won't work. And it's the same there. I mean, essentially, what was I? I was basically the family doctor of the province, mm. no? And what could I do? I could do what I knew best. That's I'm honest, even if it's sometimes, you know, harsh. I try to be as careful as I can, as mindful as I can, but I need to be honest. And that's what I try to do also for the province. I originally was thinking that what you have to say about this is a lesson for us in Canada about the next health emergency. But I actually think it goes more widely than that. I think that there's a lesson here for all kinds of public agencies and public officials. But but what's your sense of that in terms of what, what lesson is there in terms of the need for transparency? I think if there's a real crisis, people want to hear the truth and they want to be able to trust you that you don't select what you're telling them. And if you don't um, have this sort of mutual understanding about what's happening, it won't work out because there's a crisis. So here in the UK, they're about to have a major public inquiry into the COVID response. Do you think we should have something similar in Canada or at least in Ontario, which you, you're most familiar with? I think it's important, you know, after major crisis like that to understand what you can learn. 
you know what you did well what you could improve for next time how you would need to set this up if it happens again when do you need to react did you react you know too early too late not long enough or too long all of that is important you told me you were your family is kind of reluctant your wife i guess about you doing this interview after you'd done so many before hopefully it, it went well for you it wasn't too painful no 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 it was completely fine but you know she she still has really at least ambiguous feelings about all that uh, during this uh, entire pandemic i've been to a tv studio twice meaning everything else happened from home and she had two young kids who were uh, living with us to look after in a house that had very thin walls etc i mean it took a toll on her but mm -hmm. really this is uh, it was i uh, we only realized after that how stressful for us as a family it actually had been how how's covid affecting your life now it doesn't uh, it was actually quite funny, you know, I couldn't start um, my job at my new department um, when I wanted because I just uh, tested COVID positive the day I would, would have needed to start. This we is got about it a year in the ago. airplane about a year ago, yeah. well in September it was, yeah. but we went to Europe, we let it go and we lived our lives again knowing that the face of the pandemic had changed and the pandemic through ongoing infections start to keep itself under control because people would have sufficient immunity to avoid major waves that would again challenge any healthcare system or result in a considerable amount of excess deaths. Well, let's hope it stays that way and uh, really nice uh, to have a chance to talk to you again. Thank you.